So welcome back to my second video uh, to Basics to Wellness. I'm Paul Stumpo, your researcher friend. And today's video is going to go into what I call the Basics to Wellness, or the reason for the name Basics to Wellness, is that there are four foundational key points uh, that I perceive need to be in place in order that an individual may build on top of those four legs of the table uh, wellness or well-being. And I've run into many people, different people, that are doing what I would call exotic therapies, and I do exotic therapies. Uh, we will eventually get into some of them along down the uh, line. But exotic therapies meaning ones that aren't focused on these primitives, uh, like, for instance, what kind of water are you drinking? So some of you who are stopping in here may have already been to a alternative uh, practitioner. And um, I'm wondering how many of you that are tuning in who have found this channel, how, how many of you have gone into your practitioner where the practitioner, the first question he asks, or one of the first questions he asks, and when he's doing his intake or her intake, is what type of water are you drinking? Not if you're drinking water, but what type of water you're drinking. You know, sure, we've gotten a little bit more focused on the type of water we're drinking, and I hope most of us have realized that you can't drink tap water. Um, but drinking water out of a plastic bottle is got to be questioned as well. And we're not going into any of the details on any of these points in this video. We're just basically going over the overview. So the body is 70% water. The type of water that we take into our being is critical, not the amount. So people are really transfixed on half your body weight and ounces. Well, yeah, drinking a lot, um, enough water is very important, but drinking real water, what is real water? So my background in automotive engineering, I recognize that for a vehicle, for a car, our cars, you've got a car, I'm certain most of the people that are looking in here have a car have a vehicle that they care for, and the fluids that run around in that vehicle are all very tightly specified. You cannot put an improperly specified fluid in that vehicle and have it run right. And, um, and we pay great attention to those specifications on our vehicle. Yet, for the physical body, what is the specification for water, right? Or um, as I have one client, or not a client, a, distant, a relative of a client, who um, only drinks Mountain Dew. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that's the fluid that's coming in. And all of the other fluids that are built in the body are coming out of the fluid that we're intaking. Well, the body was designed to drink, uh, to take in water. That's it. None of the other things that we're drinking was it designed it. Now that, yeah, I do like kombucha and other teas and such like this. So don't get me wrong, those are very nice to drink and they're very therapeutic. But primarily, we have to have a water that the body recognizes as water. We'll go into more details on another video. So that's one of the four. Um, yet the second one would be minerals. Now, I've separated the conversation uh, between water and minerals. But in nature, in nature, there's no separation. Water and minerals come together. Sometimes those minerals are heavy metals that the body does not want. Um, coming out of your tap are heavy metals in your water that the body does not want. So, but our body runs off of minerals, right? And those minerals uh, that we take into our body, that we can take in, the body was designed to uptake minerals that are in a colloidal suspension. Well, they get into that suspension primarily by a plant uptaking a particular mineral. Each plant is designed to uptake certain types of minerals and put it into a suspension. And that colloidal suspension is how our bodies were designed to ingest and uptake a mineral. So um, not to decry the chelates that are in many of our um, plant-derived uh, supplement capsules. I do take those as well, but a primary focus to have a colloidal um, mineral that is uh, providing uh, um, the mechanism for actually getting into the body, into the cells. So water and minerals, they can't be separated because in nature they 
are not separated and the body has to have them both together but I've separated them out in a, as far as the discussion is concerned and I do take supplementation because our plants that we're intaking are you if you're here you may have gotten here uh, via a pathway that understands that we've damaged our soil and we've damaged our plants and uh, the whole uh, nutritional content of those plants unless you're eating local grown organic plants uh, you're in not getting the proper uh, nutrition uh, value in your food supply that we need to sustain a healthy well-being so water minerals and we're going to go into depth on these more so but this is the basics the four legs of the table and another leg is um, proper chiropractic care now I go out on a little bit of a limb here because I don't want to turn off any chiropractors that um, have come along to view this channel um, I would like to inspire any of the chiropractors that have come along that may not be uh, focused on doing uh, atlas adjustments or atlas adjustments in the way that B.J. Palmer uh, was focused on doing atlas adjustments. I myself have probably been to 25 different chiropractors in my modality of researching and I've lived around the country in different spots so I needed chiropractic care in different localities and so I've gone through quite a few chiropractors in that mode and I've also probably have been to at least five chiropractors that I would be considered in the mode of upper cervical chiropractic which would be a modality just specifically looking at the adjustment of the atlas um, and C1 which is the primary focus of BJ Palmer. Now without going into detail on that this is one of the four legs is that proper structural care has been taken for the well-being um, without which uh, the primitive flow in the body is constricted and any disease processes could result from that. Um, so without going into detail, I'll move on to the fourth point, which is a really uh, fundamentally more difficult point for most to understand. It is the electromagnetic fields that we're involved with um, and how to help mitigate those and how they're really impacting us. We live in a technology society here in the United States. Uh, saturation of cell, cell phones or smartphones, they're smart because people aren't, and they do all our thinking for us. They make us think better. No, they don't make us think better. They're actually highly energized, and we're going to get into more of the details on the impact of that radiation that's coming to us not just from our cell phone but from the entire environment in which we're living the cars uh, the roads are going to be outfitted the infrastructure there's around this house there are at least 40 broadcast antenna that are broadcasting into the space there is a myriad of different waves running through me all right now and um, that's why I wear devices and the house has devices to help create it, uh, a field, a safe place for us to dwell here. And so those are the four. Water, salt, minerals, proper structural chiropractic care, and having this electromagnetic geopathic stress, toxic stress field mitigated uh, in our space. Four basics to wellness, and that's the four legs of the table upon which um, well-being can be created. Thanks for stepping in and we will continue the discussion in the next video.